to our church fair heavens family today i will be doing the first reading or announcement of a transfer of membership this transfer of membership is for our brother maxwell borromeo and his transfer is from canaan seventh day adventist church to our fair heavens filipino seventh day adventist church the second reading or the final reading will be done on March 20 in our church business meeting. Thank you. Hi! Happy Sabbath po sa ating lahat. Urihin natin ang mahal na Panginoon sa araw na ito. Bagamat nariyan pa rin ang pandemya na COVID-19, ay tayong lahat ay hindi niya pinababayaman. Amen mga kapatid! At siyempre pa, binabati natin ang lahat nating mga kaibigang nanonood ngayon, lalo na ang mga nasa Pilipinas o saan man kayo panig ng mundo. Sa pangalan po ng Per Heaven Filipino 70 Adventist Church, muli happy happy sabat po sa inyong lahat. Nagpapasalamat din po tayo sa lahat ng mga kapatid na patuloy na nagbibigay ng mga ikapo at Mga handog, panoorin po natin ang bidyong ito. Putting God first can be difficult. What can we learn from John that will help us put God first in our lives today? John was the youngest of all the disciples. He loved Jesus with all his heart. When all other disciples scattered following Jesus' arrest, John stayed close to Jesus through the entire ordeal. Jesus honored his faithfulness by giving him the mission of caring for the woman who cared for Jesus the most, Mary, his mother. But when he was young, John was vengeful and angry. It was hard for him to feel compassion for those who rejected Jesus. Once, he suggested to Jesus that fire should come from heaven and destroy the Samaritans who rejected Jesus. Putting God first in John's life wasn't a single moment of courage. Instead, it was a lifelong commitment to love as Jesus loved. To put God first for John meant to give Jesus his temper as a costly offering. And the sacrifice of self at the feet of Jesus led John to offer him all his other desires. After Jesus returned to heaven, John remained faithful until his death, some 70 years later. His letters to the churches provide the greatest insight into his conversion. Here are his own words. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. He also said, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it but he who does the will of God abides forever. Sometimes we're disappointed that we still cannot control our temper or overcome our worldly passions. But John went through a profound transformation over a lifetime by putting God first every day of his life. His example compels us to do the same. As we return our tithe and give our promise, we are challenged to put God first. Ang atin pong speaker, for sure, unang-una ay lingkod ng Diyos. Kapwa ko po, Mindorinyo. Nagtapos ng kursong AB History, Philosophy and Religion sa Philippine Union College. Ngayon ay Adventist University of the Philippines noong 1987. Pagkalipas po ng pitong taon, Master of Public Health dito rin sa Philippine Union College noong 1994. Same year ng taong 1994, isa sa mahalagang yugto ng kanyang buhay ay ang pakikipag isang dibdib sa pinakamagandang dalaga sa kanyang kapanahunan kay Binibining Erilyn Dilacion Kaponpon. Sa kanilang pagmamahalan, pinagkaluban sila ng dalawang anak na sina Neil Sebrens at Neil 
Alens Damsil. Pagkalipas ng ilang panahon, isang karapatan ang ibinigay sa kanya ng Panginoon na makapaglingkod sa iba't ibang kapasidad sa ating denomination. Naglingkod siya bilang Youth Amicos Director ng NPUC sa loob ng tatlong taon, January 1, 2008 hanggang March 30, 2011. April 1, 2011, kanya namang tinanggap ang pagiging Pangulo ng South Central Luzon Conference hanggang December 31, 2015. Ibinalik siya sa NPOC bilang Health Director simula noong January 1, 2016 hanggang April 30, 2019. Sa NPOC pa rin, May 1, 2019, siya ay naging Executive Secretary hanggang sa kasalakuyan. Sa pagkakataong ito, ang sinugo kung paanong siya ay tubong mindoro Mina ng ginto, marami siyang dala na ipagkakaloob sa atin. The Executive Secretary of North Philippine Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventist, Pastor Arnilio E. Gabin. Nawa ang banal na espirito ang gubabay sa ating pagsamba ngayon. Para po sa ating tawag sa pagsamba, <clears throat> tayo po ibabasa sa ating banal na kasulatan na matatagpuan sa awit 100 verse 1 to 4. Sabi po dito, Magkaingay kayo na may kagalakan sa Panginoon, kayong lahat na lupain. Mga glingkod kayo na may kasayahan sa Panginoon. Magsilapit kayo sa kanyang harapan na may awitan. Alamin ninyo na ang Panginoon ay siyang Diyos. Siya ang lumalang sa atin at tayo'y kanya, tayo'y kanyang bayan at mga tupa ng kanyang pastulan. Magsipaso kayo sa kanyang mga pintuan daan na may pagpapasalamat at sa kanyang looban. na may pagpupuri, magpasalamat kayo sa Kanya at purihin ninyo ang Kanyang pangalan. Purihin at pagpalain ang mga talatang ito. At tayo po ay pangunahan ni Sir Mildred sa pag-aawitan. For our hymn of adoration, let us sing hymn number 6 of our SD hymnal, O Worship the Lord.
our Almighty God in heaven, we come to you this morning with a humble heart to honor and to glorify your holy name because you are the source of our life and supplier of everything. Lord, we thank you this Holy Sabbath day to fellowship with you. Thank you for the protection and blessing for one week despite of the virus and pandemic, oh God. I know that you always with us to help us to get closer to you, to have trust more and more on you. Dear Lord, forgive my sin that I have committed against thee. And my prayer and my supplication will be acceptable in today. I do pray for heaven, for heaven church, the member, our families. May the Holy Spirit help us to continue our service every Friday and every Sabbath virtually. I pray for Sister Ida, Brother Nestor, and Brother Robin. Lord, may the healing power be upon them, that their health will restore speedily, so that they will continue to serve you with their families. I do pray also, Father, your children in every nation, especially their leaders, May the love, peace, and unity upon their countrymen. Bless them, touch their heart to know that we have a loving Father who may glorify and honor. Lord, here is your servant, Pastor Arnold Gavin. Bless his heart as he delivers your message. Lord, we ask thy Holy Spirit to guide him and your holy words be upon our inspiration so that we'll, we will shine it to those who are around us, especially the people who are yet in darkness. Please, Lord, help us to walk in thy ways uprightly and faithfully as we waited for thy son coming. And thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayer this morning. I pray in the precious name of our Lord Father, in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Then we fry it with a little bit of oil. Yummy! 
let's try it. Oh, that doesn't taste good. We forgot the salt. Let's start again. Get another egg. Ask someone to crack it. Scramble it up. Add salt. Scramble it up again. And fry it up with a little bit of oil. in Happy Sabbath. Our scripture for today is found in Acts 20 verse 35. It says, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. May the Lord bless us as we're reading of his word. Good morning and happy Sabbath to Fairhaven Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank you, Mildred, for inviting me to join you in your worship today. It is indeed a blessing. We all experience God's blessing and everyday challenges. And in these times, I ask myself this question. Do I reflect Jesus' character? Do we show Jesus' image in our everyday lives? May we all be blessed with the song that I am going to share to you today. 
Thank you so much for the kind introduction and for the beautiful message and song that we have heard. 
that set our minds in our study this Sabbath morning. I would like to thank Brother Bobby and Dr. Ruth for inviting me to lead in our worship this morning in our church prayer heaven. So I would like to praise the Lord that once again I can get in touch with you through this platform and we praise the Lord for all His blessings to every one of us, especially in this time of pandemic. This morning, my topic is entitled, Love to Live. And before we proceed, may I invite you to please pause for a moment for a short prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we would like to thank you for the privilege of worship. Though we are far from its one, and we would like to thank you for the technology. Grant, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will open our hearts and mind, and may every one of us will be blessed. I ask this in the loving name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. During the outbreak of coronavirus in the Philippines, there are lots of frontliners and health professionals who lost their lives. One example is police captain Casey Gutierrez. He is working in a quarantine facility and he died on May 30 at 31 years old after inhaling disinfectant while at work. We have also one medical doctor, Dr. Sally Arga Chalyan, who died of coronavirus disease on March 26. The pediatric infectious diseases expert from Quezon City, Philippines, she was only 67 years old. And this is one of the representative of many nurses and frontliners who lost their lives throughout the world. When all the loved ones of these frontliners who lost their lives were asked, what is the reason why your loved one or loved ones risk their lives and serve our people during the time of coronavirus? Many of them responded that their loved ones who lost their lives risk their lives because of what we call altruism. What is altruism? Altruism is defined as it involves selflessly giving without a hope for reward. So we have lots of people who gave their lives, who risked their lives in service for the community and not expecting any reward. This morning I would like to share with you that there are lots of growing body of research that shows that altruism and unselfish love promote sound mental health and life itself in the giver. We know that there is a close connection between physical and mental, social and spiritual. And according to research, if we render services, if we give unselfish love, it promotes sound mental health and life itself in the giver. So I would like to share with you some researches conducted throughout the world. One of these is the Happiness Index study that was conducted in the United States of America. According to that study, altruistic behavior increases more than the lifespan of those who practice the principle of giving while living. It increases the likelihood that they will be happier throughout their lives as well. So this is one of the result of the study that if we gave voluntary services and if we give unselfish love, it increases the likelihood that they will be happier throughout their lives as well. According to one book entitled Genetic Guide to True Happiness, or the week magazine, September 13, 2013, page 24, it says, Human beings appear to be genetically disposed to be happiest 
when they are selflessly giving to others. People who emphasize service to others and connection to community show results or show pattern of gene expression that results in less inflammation and stronger immunity. So there are lots of writings and research that shows that we are genetically disposed to be happiest people when we selflessly giving our services to others. Maybe you have experienced this kind of uh, thing. If we provided service or help, or if we uh, gave our time and our love and attention to many people or to the community, we experience happiness. I remember the story of John Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller got sick. And, you know, he founded a foundation, what we called Rockefeller Foundation. And they provided lots of assistance and help to different parts of the world. And according to the story, John D. Rockefeller improved his health and he lived longer. You know, the law of creation is for service. Anything that the Lord was created, it gave service. Like the plants, the rain, anything that God's created, it is created for service. So that is the intention and that is the purpose why we are here. So in behalf of the leadership of our church, so I would like to express my heartfelt appreciation to all of you brethren who provided service to our church, to our community. And you know, according to our study, if we provided services, we will be happier. And there is also a study conducted in Germany. And according to this study, it was found that altruism contributes to more happiness, active involvement, sociable being, and greater level of enjoyment than those with low scores in altruistic spirit. So this research uh, gives us another evidence that if we provided service and if we contribute to the community, it will give us happiness, active involvement, and greater level of enjoyment than those with low scores in altruistic spirit. There is also another study conducted by University of Massachusetts Medical School. They uh, studied 2,000 Presbyterian Church members and according to the study, it was found out that providing help to others was a more important predictor of better mental health than receiving help. Kaya mga kapatid, talagang totoo po na kapag tayo ay naglilingkod at kapag tayo gumagawa ng kabutihan, according to this study, providing help to others was a more important predictor of better mental health. You know, today there are lots of people who got Alzheimer, dementia, and there are many people who experience depression. The antidote and God's prescription is let us provide help, let us give service, and it will make us more healthier and happy. So according to Acts chapter 20, verse 35, according to Dr. Luke, it says, Acts 20, verse 35, it says, I have shown you in every way, by laboring like this, that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that He said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. The author of this verse is Dr. Luke. He is a medical professional and he knows what he is saying that it is more blessed to give than to receive. In the Bible, 
there are two seas that was mentioned that were mentioned the first is the sea of galilee and the dead sea in the dead sea i hope some of you have been to the dead sea there are no living creatures living in the dead sea the water is dark and the odor is not good why because it is a body of water that receives water but it doesn't have any outlet or exit but the sea of galilee according to the story according to the bible it has lots of living creatures living and the water is very fresh why it receives water and it also supplies water around the villages or around the area so the bible is true that it is more blessed to give than to receive there is one author who says humans are engineered for love rather than merely existing as biological survival machines without love our bodies fail to thrive so brethren dear church we are created by god for love and for service and according to spanish we are serve to save servicio salvacion is servicio we are created and we are saved to love and to provide service we are not merely survival machines and there are lots of people who end their lives because they don't feel love so this is the intention of god to every one of us we are created for love and for service and according to the stories and according to many research without love our bodies fail to thrive and according to albert einstein he says try not to become a man of success but rather try to become a man of value so this is a very beautiful quotation that according to him when we become uh, educated when we have uh, wealth or we are uh, well off he reminded us that we should be a man of value uh, i would like to praise and thank the lord that we have lots of church members around the world they are well to do but they are very generous to help the work of our church and they are very humble and they are very generous so this is the intention of god for every one of us when we became educated and when we became a uh, well off god's intention and god's plan for us is we become a man of value we should become loving we should become humble and we should be generous in helping god's ministry there is one doctor in the name of dr dean ornis he wrote a book entitled love and survival and according to him anything that promotes feeling of love and intimacy is healing this is very true the bible and the spirit of prophecy supports uh, his statement that anything that promotes feeling of love and intimacy is healing and further according to him anything that promotes isolation separation loss loneliness anger depression and related feelings often leads to suffering disease and premature death from all causes so if we harbor anger loneliness resentment it causes and leads us to premature death and other causes of lifestyle diseases so dear fellow church members dear friends mga kababayan this is god's plan for every one of us for his church our strategic focus for this year is i will go and one of the kpis of i will go 
is to disciple every church member, and our church should be a center of health and healing. And according to many studies, there are lots of church members who goes out of the church not because of doctrines, but the reason is because of relational problem. So by God's grace, let us promote love, let us promote an intimacy, and this is the source of healing. But if we harbor anger, resentment, anxiety, and other negative feelings, it leads us to suffering, disease, and premature death from all causes. Friends, we are living in the last part of our earth history, especially in this time of pandemic and crisis. We should love and support one another. Let us pray with one another. Let us get in touch with one another. If there is love and intimacy, it will create a good impact to the community. And according to the Bible, the people will know that we are true disciples if we love and support one another. So, according to Proverbs, what a man desires is unfailing love. This is what the world needs, unfailing love. Let us love our family. Let us love our church, our community. God is love. And that is God's desire that everyone of love, everyone of us, I mean, should be an agent of love and healing. Friends, you don't need to become a self-sacrificing martyr to feel happier. Just being a little generous will suffice. So we, didn't, we don't need to become a martyr. Just extending a support to our family, to our church member, to our community, it will suffice and it will make our life, ha life happy and more longer. And you know, friends, brothers and sisters, Christians see the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross as the best demonstration of altruistic love ever. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have an everlasting life. Friends, brothers and sisters, Jesus is the model and an example of altruistic spirit. When Jesus was here on earth, he spent most of his time in healing, extending forgiveness and love to all people, regardless of their status and their uh, position. So, Christ is our model of altruistic spirit. God the Father gave His Son. And Jesus Christ, when He was here on earth, He gave His life, He gave His time in service and order for us to be saved. And so according to 1 John 4, 8, Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. So we would like to thank for the grace and mercy and love of our Lord Jesus, and for the love of our God the Father, Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. According to John, whoever does not love, does not know God, because God is love. Friends, brothers, and sisters, we don't know what lies ahead. We don't know what kinds of crises are coming again. But while we are still living and while we are still waiting for Christ's soon return, let us show and extend our love to our family, to our church members, and to all the people around, around us. Because this is the reason why God came to this earth. For God so loved the world. 
And us, as Seventh-day Adventist Christian, we should be a model of altruism and model of God's love. So I pray as we continue to wait for Christ's second coming, let us love one another. Let us extend our support, our prayer. This is God's intention why we are created, love to live. May God bless each one of you and may we continue to love God and to love one another. May I offer a prayer of commitment to every one of you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for thy great love. Thank you so much for all your goodness to every one of us. And Lord, thank you so much in a very special way that you have chosen us to be your children, to be your sons and daughter, and to be a channel of blessing to our family, to our church member, and to our community. Thank you so much for the lessons that we have studied this morning that reminds us that if we will love and provide services, it will come back to us and it will give us long life and it will make us happier. So Lord, this morning, I would like to pray for every member of Fair Heaven Filipino Seventh-day Adventist Church. I pray for their leadership. I pray for their pastor. And I pray for all their members of their family. Grant, Lord, that you will continue to protect and keep them safe, especially from COVID-19. And Lord, may the love and grace of our God the Father and the mercy of our Lord Jesus and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with all our members in fair heaven. Thank you so much that you will be with us always and you will help us to become a channel of blessing. And when the time comes when our Lord Jesus return, may every one of us together with our loved ones, we have the privilege to meet our Lord Jesus and be in that heavenly kingdom. And we will be with our Lord Jesus through ceaseless ages. We ask all these things in the loving name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. In response to the message, let us sing hymn number 574 of our essay hymnal, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee.
Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we return unto thee the honor and the glory and for all your blessings to every one of us, especially for the privilege of worship. Thank you so much for the lesson that we have studied this morning. And we pray that you will help each one of us to continue to be a channel of blessing and to share the love that we have received from thee. May the grace of our God the Father and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and the protection and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen. Are you in need of a prayer? We can help. Just send us an email using the email address shown below with your name and a phone number that we can reach and we would be glad to pray with you.